Good morning, Moonies! Welcome back to Which is the Moon. I'm your Monday hostess, Natalie. Today is the beginning of week 16 in season 13 of Witches of the Moon, and we want to thank you very much for joining us again this week. This week's topic is witchy self-care and quarantining craft. This, I think, I think it is safe to say that this has been an unusual year, if nothing else. A very, very tough year for many of us, uh, especially those of us that are used to being able to be around people more in terms of our working environment. We've had to be very flexible. I find that I'm doing a lot of teletherapy these days versus going out and seeing people. I do have to still go out within the community and see some people because for some people teletherapy is not allowed. So it's a uh, it's amazing. You are thirsty today, aren't you? I'm sorry, my little dragon Dre here. I just filled his water bowl and it's already almost empty. He is a thirsty fellow today. I think I forgot to feed him yesterday because we were moving uh, our office. We're re relocating my husband's office from Denton to next to my office out here in Aubrey. And so it was a busy day yesterday. Lots and lots of bruises from the moving, but it had to be done. That was one of the, the, <laughs> the quarantine things. And that brings me to... You know, keeping your mental health good during this time, I think, is very important. And I think for a lot of people, your usual magical practices may have kind of gotten set aside or pushed aside or, or changed, morphed in somehow. And I think it's important during this time that we really take time to focus on our craft and to be our witchy selves in whatever capacity we can. If you are used to working with a coven, I'm sure coven work has changed quite a bit. Zoom is great, Skype is fantastic, but like it or not, it's not the same thing as being in a room with the people that you love and care about and that you want to see and that you work with and so forth. And I think for a lot of people getting into that same frame of mind and raising that same kind of energy when you're not in the same room doesn't feel the same. It's not the same. And so it may be harder for us to really feel our power when we're having to adjust ourselves. I think that during this time, it's very important to take time for just you to cleanse, to focus, to adjust your mental attitude to all of the multitude of changes. I think right now a lot of people are suffering from depression. I know I myself have been battling a lot of really low points because my business has really taken a hit. Uh, we have lost a lot of our, our private clients. Thank God for our contracts. Although even our contracts have gotten kind of slow and some of the referrals have gotten slower. And in the midst of this pandemic, I've been trying to really get the purple broom going. I've had that business for some time, but this year I was really determined to put focus on that business and get the apothecary going. I completed my master herbalist certification. I joined the American Herbalist Guild and I've really been trying to establish the brand of the Purple Broom. If you want to know more about that, bebop over to my channel because I'm going to do a video after this about uh, some new products that I have going into the store. And it's, it's just been tough. So what I have been doing to kind of recollect myself is I have been putting a lot of focus on my meditative practice. Because I had found that even my meditations were not as well encompassed in terms of I wasn't really reaching that state of true, I don't know if you want to call it Zen, but a relaxation that comes normally with my meditations. I had gotten to a point where I could meditate within five minutes and just be completely transported out of where I was. And I have found that reaching my sacred grove and really focusing has been more difficult for me. So I've been trying to really take time and cut out all distractions 
turning off the phone or putting it on do not disturb so I don't get a million different ding ding dings like you're hearing now and other kinds of things going on to allow myself to detach from everything that's going on because I find my mind wandering back to all of the financial issues that we're looking at right now because of the pandemic uh, referrals and that sort of thing and I'm just trying to kind of keep myself stable so increasing my meditation has been very helpful for me I have found that increasing the number of ritual baths or showers that I take has really helped sometimes just putting some nice essential oils into some bath water or um, some fresh herbs or a little of both and allowing myself to sit in a steamy hot bath and just soak for a few minutes has really helped and many of you that have watched the channel for some time know that normally I I'm a shower person I'm not a bath person so I always shower before I bathe <laughs> before I get in a bath because otherwise I think you're just sort of sitting in your own dirty water and, and I do rinse off before I get into the these baths just to rinse any negativity out and to to rinse off any surface dirt so that I can sit in the bath and just just soak in the oils and the herbs and the essences of those flowers and plants and I have found that that has helped me to reconnect I have been doing a lot of grounding kinds of activities actually physically taking off my shoes going outside putting my back against my oak tree putting my feet flat on the ground and my hands down on the ground and just focusing on grounding and receiving the healing that uh Mother Earth, Gaia, Pachimama has to offer. I have also gone back and revisited some of my earlier lessons in my Munai Ki training as well as in just my general practice to try to refresh why I am who I am and how I can harness that power. I find that going back and rereading some of the old books um, and reading some of the old articles, watching some of the old videos. I love Lady Grave Dancer. So I've gone back and watched several of Tequila's videos just because she's a hoot and a holler and she always lifts my spirits. She has moved recently and so she's now further away from me than she was and I don't know if and when I'll get to see her again, but her energy comes through on her videos. So I've been soaking some of that up whenever I have an opportunity. If I'm feeling particularly down, I will watch hers or one of sunshine's old videos things like that to just refocus myself as far as where i am and where i'm going and reminding myself that i am the master of my own destiny that the things that are beyond my control that have affected my business might have set me back but they haven't stopped me i have been fortunate and i do say extremely blessed to have been able to work through the pandemic and thank the goddess and the god for that because i know a lot of people haven't there are people who own businesses like bars and restaurants and things like that that have not been able to be open the full pandemic and so reminding myself that i have many reasons to be grateful has been remarkably healing in this time of the pandemic so things that are particularly witchy that I've been doing, as I said, I've been putting more of a focus on the meditations. I have been taking more baths or time, just even just 10 minutes out of a rough day to cleanse myself, do a ritual shower and then sit in a bath and take in those essences. I have been, I'm sorry, my chair, the hydraulics on my chair I'm just slowly like sinking. Dink, dink, dink. It's driving me crazy. I've got to do something about the, the hydraulics on this chair or find some way to just stop it from sinking. It's driving me nuts. I'm short enough as is. So by the time I'm done, I'm like up here, my keyboard's here, and I'm like looking over. Uh, anyway, uh, I have also been taking a lot of time to reflect in meditation, to journal about my feelings, my experiences, um, what I'm going through I find writing remarkably healing and so putting a lot of time into working on my next book and getting some of these things together 
crafting in general, I find remarkably healing. I've been going to my office every Saturday and doing some sort of craft work, uh, making some sort of salve, working on tinctures, putting together teas, trying to uh, take uh, my advanced herbalism and work towards that class, looking into completing my PhD and how to get that taken care of and just putting my focus on things that I enjoy that I feel will forward me through this rough time. And I think that that's true for everyone. Remembering to ground yourself, to put your focus into your craft during this time really makes a huge difference in how your mental attitude shifts. And you'll literally feel that shift. For me, it was almost like a click. You know, once I get in there and I start working, I'm totally focused on that and it's a click. And all of the negativity that I'm feeling just sort of drains out of me. And especially when I'm grounding, that really makes a difference. So I strongly recommend doing that. Get out into nature. I have a very dear friend who passed away several years ago now. It's been three or four years now, I think, that she's been gone. And she, the one of the very last things that she sent me before she passed was uh, a meme on Facebook. And it said, witches go to nature to be healed. And I cannot emphasize to you the truth in that. Getting out, if I can't get to my sacred grove in the astral, then I definitely put myself there in the physical. I will literally walk out or drive to a spot where I know there are a lot of trees that I can go into and surround myself with. Of course, I have to be careful about copperheads this time of the year. Um, it's getting cooler, but it's been very warm. This is Texas, so they're still out and about. And with all the leaves on the ground, it's very hard to spot the little buggers sometimes. But I do like to go out and just sit within nature. Go by the lake and find a nice spot and sit next to the lake and just contemplate the water. Sitting out in the tree in my front yard and just taking in my garden and my trees and just reconnecting has been remarkably helpful to me. I feel that when we reconnect with nature, the goddess sees to our needs. And so for me, that's the witchiest, most natural thing to do. Uh, turning to my cards for guidance has also been very helpful to me during this time. I have a specific deck that I use as kind of a... See, there goes the chair again. Uh, a guidance sort of thing. It's the uh, Joy and Sorrow Oracle deck by Roxy Sim. I've showed it before in a few videos. And I have been returning to doing a daily draw with that just to give me something to focus on during the day. Another thing that I have been trying to do, and in my line of work, it's very difficult because I work uh, in the field of speech pathology. So communication and speech is something that I am required to do every day. But um, I have been trying to get back to, uh, going back to Timothy Roderick's first year in a day book he had days of silence and i have been trying very hard to implement that in this world where we are so connected through facebook and everything else it's it's almost impossible to disconnect completely but i have been trying to at least carve out an hour or two out of the week or a day out of the week usually when i go to my office on Saturday to turn off notifications and things like that and just sit with myself in silence. It's it's also very healing and it's not particularly witchy, I guess, but it is something that I learned from that basic practice when I was doing the first year in a day program with Timothy's book. So those moments of silence 
when you disconnect, it goes back to that level of meditation. It allows you to let your mind wander and you will find the ideas come to you and you can detach. I think it strengthens your craft. I think it makes you more focused and I think it allows you to simply process everything that's going on. I think that we are so focused on not focusing on things that sometimes we don't allow our mind to to actually process what's going on around us. We try to detach it and just keep it at bay and not think about it for a while. When what we need to do is to think about it, to focus on it in terms of what can we put into place as a plan of action? What can we do magically to start working things in our favor to heal this and to stop this process? What can we do together as witches to put a stop to the virus that is affecting so many negatively? And I think that there must be something going on because I have seen a drop in the number of deaths um, at least in this area, which is great. The number of cases has gone up a little bit, but I think that's going to happen for a while as more and more testing is done and as um, more and more people go for the testing. I don't know that it means that necessarily the number of people that have it has gone up. I think the number of people are just being more discovered. But I think that the severity of it has decreased significantly because I've known several of my patients recently got it and although they were sick it was more kind of like your normal flu it wasn't this horrible they were on respirators out of the 12 patients I had that got it one and this was way back at the beginning of the pandemic had been in the hospital on a respirator but he had other complicating issues so um, and he's very elderly so I think that it's turning. I think some of our working is, is doing to that effect. So we need to keep those kinds of things up. But give yourself some time to process your own feelings. Journaling is very, very helpful for that. And just taking some time in silence to sit and journal and meditate and write down your feelings, write down you know, your hopes and your fears and what you want to see come out of the end of this. When do you think we'll see the end of this? Make a projection and let's let's start working towards that goal and giving yourself some time to process and heal from everything that's been going on. But making sure that your craft stay, stays strong. Keep active. Keep doing spell work daily. Don't allow yourself to become lax because then your craft will weaken. I do appreciate your time today. Blessed be and I hope that you all stay safe.